godliness, covenant gateway to greatness. And our running text is Psalm chapter 112, verse 1 to 3. And the Bible says, Praise ye the Lord. Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord, that delighted greatly in his commandments. His seed shall be mighty upon the earth. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. Not only that, wealth and riches shall be in his house, and his righteousness endureth forever. The man that fears the Lord, the man that delights greatly in his commandment, the scripture says, this man shall be great. Not only will the man be great, his own seed, his own children shall be great. His generation shall be blessed. I pray for someone here today, may you be that person God is talking about. Understand that greatness is our heritage in redemption. God said to Abraham in Genesis 12, verse 1 to 3, Leave your country, thy kindred, your father's house, and come to a land that I will show you. And in this land, I will make you great. I will bless thee and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. And by redemption, we have come to see that you and I are seeds of Abraham. For if ye be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. So every child of Abraham is ordained to be graced. Say with me, I'm a seed of Abraham. I'm ordained to be grace. Say, Lord, I'm a seed of Abraham. I am ordained to be grace. But here it is. The fear of God is the highway to greatness. If you are going to be great, you must walk in the fear of God. We see the example of Joseph in Genesis chapter 37. You read verse 2 and verse 3. The Bible tells us these are the generations of Jacob. Joseph, being 17 years old, was feeding the flock with his brethren. And the lad was with the sons of Beha and with the sons of Zepha his father's wife, and Joseph brought unto his father their evil reports. He could not have brought their evil report if he was a part of their evil. And look at verse 3. He tells us, Now, Israel, the father, loved Joseph more than all his children. Why? Not just because he was a child of his old age, but because Joseph was a child that was walking in the fear of God. Even at the age of 17, he chose to stand for God rather than to defile himself. He was in the midst of corruption, but decided to single himself out. I'm praying for someone here today that that same grace that made him stand out evil in the midst of evil, that same grace is coming upon you in the name of Jesus. Even though everybody was in error, Joseph chose not to go the way of the others. And so his father loved him, not just because he was a child of his old age, but because Joseph was a child that was walking in the fear of God. If you follow through to Genesis 39 and verse 9, he was in the house of the master, challenged, as it were, sold into slavery. 
And the master's wife cast her eyes upon him. But look at the testimony of Joseph. Verse 9. Okay, so let's read from verse 7. Thank you, studio. Verse 7. And it came to pass after these things that his master's wife cast her eyes upon Joseph. And she said, lie with me. But he refused. Say with me, I refuse. Say, Lord, I say, I refuse. Say, I refuse evil. I refuse sin. I refuse iniquity. I refuse corruption. I refuse defilement. I refuse. Say it one more time. Say, I refuse. Say it with faith and confidence. I refuse. He refused. And said unto his master's wife, Behold, my master, what had not what is with me in the house? And he has committed all that he had into my hand. There is no greater in this house than me. He has kept back nothing from me except you because you are his wife. How can I do this wicked thing, this great wickedness and sin against God? He refused. The Bible says, my son, if sinners entice you, consent not. Will there be enticement? Yes. But if sinners entice you, consent not. Refuse to be corrupted by their corruption. Consent not. Joseph refused. Now you look at verse 21 to verse 23. Please follow this carefully. The Lord was with Joseph. Why? He was a man that feared God. The Lord was with him and showed him mercy and gave him favor even in the prison. And everything that was done in the prison was done by Joseph. He was the doer of it all. They put him in charge even though he was challenged. Never mind the challenge. Never mind the mockery. Never mind the laughter. Those who are laughing at you now, they will soon come to celebrate God with you. They say you are spiritual. Don't mind them. Refuse to go the way of corruption. Your destiny is too precious for you to allow a fellow student to derail you. Do your ear like this. Say, I will hear. I, I need you to pull it. Pull it. Say, I will hear. Your destiny is too precious. For you to allow one child of the devil to push you into error. Joseph refused. And you look at Genesis chapter 41, beginning from verse 39 to 41. Genesis 41, verse 39. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, For as much as God has showed you all this, there is none so discreet and as wise as thou art. Thou shalt be over my house, and according to thy word shall all my people be ruled. Only in the throne will I be greater than thou. Verse 41. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, See, I have this day set thee over all the land of Egypt. You will go over. I said you will go over. I said you will go over. Look at verse 46. Joseph was 30 years old when he began to reign. Your star will shine. I said your star will shine. And it will shine early. I said it will shine early. I said your star will shine. And your star will shine early. Refuse to be corrupted. Refuse it. You want to see greatness. Like Joseph saw. Walk in the fear of God. Walk in the fear of God. Please note. That there are forces of ungodliness that are seeking to derail our destinies. There are forces of ungodliness that seeks to derail our destiny. But you will not be a victim. Now we look at two of these forces very quickly. Forces of ungodliness. Number one is the spirit of wodom. Say wodom. The spirit of wodom. Sexual perversion, promiscuity, immorality, uncontrolled sexual desires and appetites. 
the spirit of wisdom, pornography, masturbation, and then there is the one they call cyber sex, phone sex, sex testing, error. And then you two, you now carry your own phone. Now put it somewhere. You are now posing, showing nudity on camera and sending it to him. Because he tells you, oh, your body is beautiful. If I, anytime I see you, my hair just loses control. And then you think it is you that is making him lose control. It is the devil manipulating your destiny. That is the truth. Life is an individual race. Every man is running his own race. Don't let anybody <laughs> entice you into destruction. No. Nobody may see you, but God is seeing you. And I tell you the truth, the one who determines the ultimate outcome of your destiny is God himself. And you know you can't manipulate God. Neither can you hide anything away from him. He knows it. There is nothing. Everything lays bare before him. Everything is naked before God. Everything is open before him. And you can't bribe God. And you can't use sympathy to get God. No. There is the spirit of wisdom that promotes sexual perversion, immorality, in Hosea chapter 5, verse 1 to 4. Hosea chapter 5, verse 1 to 4. Hear this, O priest, and hearken ye house of Israel, and give ear, O house of the king. For judgment is towards you, because you have been a snare on misfire, and a net spread upon tabor. And the revolters are profound to make a slaughter. Though I have been a rebuker of them all. I know Ephraim. And Israel is not hid from me. For now, O Ephraim, thou committest wisdom, And Israel is defiled. They will not frame their doings to turn unto their God. They are stubborn. They will not hear. They think it is not possible to be called. After all, I'm the only one that knows. Nobody else knows. They think they are an expert in it. They are skillful in it. They can manipulate anything. They will not hear. They will not turn to God. Now let's continue in that verse. For the spirit of wardoms is in the midst of them. And they have not known the Lord. So what is controlling them is a spirit. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 12, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against wicked spirits in high places. Understand that there are spiritual forces behind ungodliness. But in the name of Jesus, for everyone who desires to be sincere with God today, your liberty is established. First Corinthians chapter 6, verse 18 to 20. First Corinthians chapter 6, verse 18 to 20. Flee fornication. It didn't say resist. It didn't say pray. It said flee. To flee means run. Run. Flee fornication. Every sin that a man doeth is without the body. But he that committed fornication sinned against his own body. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, you are of God, and you are not your, your body is too precious for you to mess it up. No. 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 Let's continue reading. You are bought with a pride. Therefore, glorify God in your body 
and in your spirit, which are God. Don't let any young man make your body a dustbin to be dumping nonsense. First Corinthians chapter 10. And in case you are a man and the, the young girl is your challenge, you better punch her in the eye and run away. First Corinthians chapter 10, verse 8 and 9. Neither let us commit fornication. As some of them committed and fell in one day, three and 20,000. 23,000 people died in one day as a result of fornication. Now listen, there is what is called the doctrine of Balaam. How that Balak and Balaam read 21 altars. Three altars, seven different locations. Yet they couldn't get Israel. Every altar of wickedness they read failed. They attempted to curse the people, the curse returned back. Rather than cursing, the prophet was blessing. And he said, I can't curse whom God has blessed. I can't defile who God has not defiled. And then the king was angry. But the prophet came back to the king and said, okay, so what we could not do by rearing altars of wickedness against them, let me tell you a secret. The reason why nothing is working against them is because their God is in the midst of them. But there is what you can do that will make their God turn his back against them. If he turns his back, you don't need anything. You, you have them for free. And what was his counsel to the king? Send ladies, beautiful ladies, into their streets. Let them defy them. Once they defy them, their God is too holy. His face cannot behold iniquity. And what 21 authors could not do, sexual immorality, perversion, brought down the heads of the people. The king didn't need to raise one weapon. The people were destroyed on their own. Your destiny is too precious for you to allow. Sin is pleasurable, but the pleasure is only for a moment. It is only for a moment. It's only for, no matter the sexual pleasure, there is no sexual pleasure that can last 24 hours. But the consequences of it can be for life. Number two is lying spirit. Lying spirit. First Kings chapter 22, verse 22 and 23. First Kings chapter 22, verse 22 and verse 23. This is what the Bible says. And the Lord said unto him, We are with. And he said, I will go north. And I will be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. And he said, Thou shalt persuade him and prevail also. Go forth and do so. Verse 23. Now therefore behold, the Lord has put a lying spirit in the mouth of all these prophets. And the Lord has spoken evil concerning them. Lying spirit. And hear me, whether you like it or not, lying is not of God. In Psalm 101 and verse 7 he said, he that tells lies shall not tarry in my presence. He that tells lies will not tarry. Psalm 101 verse 7. He that tells lies, he that walketh deceit shall not tarry in my sight. And every liar is a child of the devil. John chapter 8 verse 44. The Bible tells us, ye of your father the devil and the loss of your father you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him. He speaketh a lie. He speaketh of his own. He is a liar and the father of it. And I know that there are no sons and daughters of the devil here this morning. I didn't hear you say amen. There is no one that is a son and daughter of the devil here this morning. And so don't make yourself one. Now understand that you can overcome sin. Say with me, I can overcome sin. You can overcome sin. You can live a godly life. You can break every control and be free from every addiction, every 
deadly habit, every, you can be free from every control. All you need to do is, number one, accept responsibility and take responsibility. Accept responsibility. Take responsibility. And fight. Say with me, fight. Say, Lord, I say, fight. Fight. Take responsibility and fight. Put up a fight of faith. Fight against uncleanliness. Fight against those forces, elements, seeking to corrupt your destiny. Listen, you can't live a godly life without a fight. Godliness is warfare. You can't live a godly life by just wishing. I wish I can just be free. I wish this thing will just stop troubling me. There is no wishing that can make a man free. In 1 Timothy 6, verse 12, he said, fight the good fight of faith. Five. Five. Stop making excuses. Stop looking for who to blame. Put up a five. Put up a five. You can live a godly life, but not without a fight. There is no sinless environment. Yeah, everywhere you turn to, you turn on, you look at your device, you go on the internet, you see naked ladies, you see naked men, you see all, all manner of pornography everywhere. One time I saw an advert, it was supposed to be an advert for toothpaste. And yet, the fellow was nude and I was wondering like, okay, so what is the connection between the toothpaste now and all of this? Not, no connection. Can you use toothpaste to paste? No. Put up a fight. He said, resist the devil. Resist his court and he will flee from you. James chapter 4 verse 7. Put up a fight. Tell, say with me, say I will put up a fight. Put, listen to me. Let me tell you this. Ungodliness is not looking for anything other than one. It doesn't want you to fulfill your destiny. That's all. It doesn't want you to live that kind of life that God wants you to live and has ordained for you. Put up a fight. Put up a fight. Say with me, I will fight. Say with me, I will fight. Say it one more time, I will fight. You cannot win the war except with a fight. You must 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 fight. How do you fight? Laboring in the world. Labor. You labor in the world. You labor in prayers. Labor in the world. Labor in prayers. Now let us look at some specific steps on how to overcome ungodliness. Number one, put on godly habits. Say with me, put on godly habits. Put on godly habits. Colossians chapter 3 and verse 10. Put on godly habits. And I put on the new man. Say with me, I will put on. Say it louder. Say put on. And put on the new man which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. Put on. Put on. Put on. Put on. Let's continue reading. Verse 11. Where there is neither Greek nor Jew nor circumcision nor uncircumcision, barbarian, Christian, born nor free, but Christ is all and in all. Put on, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long suffering, forbearing one another, forgiving one another. If any man has a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgives you, so also forgive. Verse 14. And above all these things, put on charity which is the bond of perfectness. So there is what to put off. There is what to put on. Nature abhors vacuum. Put off. When you get back to your hall of residence, maybe after class or after the day's work, what do you do? You put off the clothes that you took at rise. 
maybe because it's dirty or it's stained or what have you, right? You put it off, and what do you do? You put on something new, something fresh, something better, something clean. Now, that is what the scripture is talking about. Having put off filthiness, having put off corruption, there is what you must put on in order for you to stay sanctified and live a godly life. Dwell in the word. Acts chapter 20, verse 32, I commend you to God and the word of his grace, which is able to build you up. Tarry in prayers. Jude 20, beloved, building up yourself in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Engage in fasting as a way of life. Not fasting without limits. That's not what I'm talking about. Hello. Did you hear what I said? Not fasting without limits. God said I should fast for 200 days. That's not what I'm talking about. Have a scheduled fasting routine. Is that clear to someone? And every other time as you are led by the Spirit. Why? Is this not the fact that you have chosen to lose the bands of wickedness, to undo the heavy body, to let your prayers go free, and that you break every yoke? Put on godly habits. Cultivate godly character. Cultivate sound Christian character. And character is not a gift. Character is a choice. I will not lie again. Jesus, help me. You make the choice. God will supply the grace. When the king sent for Joseph and Joseph came out of the prison, if you follow through Genesis 41, the Bible tells us Joseph put off his old garments and had a change of raiment before he could appear before the king. Listen to this. If you want God to show up on your matter, you must clean up. Until you clean up, God will not show up. The things you are struggling with academically, spiritually, financially, in your health. Clean up so that God can show up. Until you clean up, God will not show up. And until God shows up, there is no change of story. Clean up. Clean up your environment. Get rid of all those things that exposes you to sin. Clean up. Clean up your device. There are certain notifications that shouldn't be coming on your devices anymore. There are certain things that shouldn't be popping up. No. Clean up. Say with me, clean up. Tell your neighbor, clean up, clean up. Tell somebody else, clean up. Clean up. Clean up your environment. The things you watch. The sites you visit. The things you see with your eyes. The things you hear. When they talk about phone sex, they don't see each other. They just communicate and say all manner of things. Just to arouse sexual pleasure. I'm saying it to you because you know what I'm saying. I know you know, so you can't pretend not to. And then you finish talking to somebody on the phone and you are running to the toilet. So what are you running to the toilet to do? Or you are looking for tissue paper. What are you looking for tissue paper for? You better clean up. Say with me, I will clean up. Clean up your environment. Clean up your mind. Clean up. Get rid of those materials that promotes or triggers sin. Get rid of them. And if they are individuals, severe yourself away from them. Friendship is not by force. Every man is running his own race. Listen to me. The sin you don't stop will stop you. Give no place to the devil. Give him no room. Give no place to the flesh to dominate you. No. Clean up. Say with me, I will clean up. 
clean up. Clean up. Sanitize your environment. Spiritualize your environment. Sanctify your environment. There are certain songs you shouldn't be listening to as a child of God. No. That is why you are praying and the prayer is not going anywhere. You are speaking in tongues and you can even feel it yourself that you are empty. How can you be a born again and uh, Davido is your role model? I, I don't understand. Whiz Kid is your moral booster. When you need inspiration, he's the one that you go to and you are a child of God. You are born again, spirit filled. And then you say you're having nightmares. Why would you not have nightmares? And you don't know what's happening. If I just see the opposite sex like this, something inside my body will just be doing one kind, one kind, one kind, one kind, one kind. I can't explain it, but there's no way you can explain it. Because the things you are feeding, they are junk. Naturally, we know you are what you eat. You eat healthy, you will stay healthy. You eat poor, you will have poor health. The same way it is in the spirit. If you feed on junk, your spirit man will be corrupted. Well, let's try to round up. My time is already fast spent. Number two, engage the power of the blood for your deliverance. Say with me, engage the power of the blood. Engage the power of the blood for your deliverance. Zechariah chapter 9, verses 11 and 12. He said, as for thee also, by the blood of thy covenant, I brought out thy prisoners from the pit, wherein there is no water. Turn you to your stronghold, you prisoners of hope. Even today, I declare that I will render double unto you. There is deliverance in the blood. There is healing in the blood. Hebrews chapter 9, verses 12 and verse 14. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 12. Neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood, he entered once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? So there is purging power in the blood. There is cleansing power in the blood. There is deliverance power in the blood. And thank God this morning, we are face to face with the communion table. You can engage the power of the blood for dominion over everything that corrupts, over everything that defiles. In the name of Jesus, for you and I, our sanctification level is going higher this morning. What are the benefits of godliness? Number one, it enhances the flow of revelation. Psalm 25 and verse 14. Psalm 25 and verse 14. The secret of the Lord is with them that fear him and he will show them his covenant. The deep and secret things of God are accessed through godliness. The more godly you are, the more of his secret you access. You look at the life of Joseph that we talked about this morning. He said, for as much as God has showed you these things, he attained greatness by revelation. It is insight that takes people on a flight. We see the example of Paul in Galatians 2 verse 2. He said concerning Paul, I went up by revelation. How did he go up? How did he go up? How did he go up? By revelation. I went up by revelation. And who is this Paul? Jesus I know. Paul I know. He was a God in the likeness of men. Acts chapter 14 and verse 11. Acts chapter 19, verse 15, we see authority conferred by light. Paul was unkillable. They couldn't kill him. They couldn't destroy him. In fact, a venomous viper beat him in Acts 28, verse 1 to 6. The people were waiting for him to die. They waited and waited. And when they saw that Paul would not die, they changed their mind. Your enemies will change their mind concerning you. I said they will change their mind. So, embrace godliness. Godliness makes you unkillable, untouchable, immolestable. Number two, it guarantees generational posterity. Godliness guarantees generational 
posterity. We read that all in Psalm 112, verse 1 to 3. Blessed is the man that fears the Lord, that delighted greatly in his commandment. What and riches shall be in his house, the generation of the upright shall be blessed. In the name of Jesus, your destiny will not suffer corruption. Your light will shine. And your light will shine early. The ones who are receiving it are saying it louder. Amen. Amen. I say your destiny will not be corrupted. Amen. Your destiny will not derail. Amen. Your destiny will not fail. Amen. The giant in you will manifest for your world to see. Rise up on your feet. Lift up your hands to heaven. And together let us give God signs. And let us give him praise. And I want you to declare this word. I choose godliness. I refuse corruption. I refuse defilement. I choose godliness. I choose greatness. Somebody go ahead and make that declaration right now. I choose godliness. I choose greatness. I refuse corruption. I refuse to be defiled. I refuse to be defiled. Thank you, precious Father. In Jesus' precious name, we are praying. The choir will sing this song for us. There is power, wonder walking power. There is power in the blood of Jesus. Now, why they are doing that? Why they are doing that? You are here this morning. You want to walk out of darkness into light. You know it yourself. You have been troubled. You have been concerned. You have been worried. You feel unworthy. You feel unqualified. You want to pray. You can't pray. You want to fast. You can't fast. You are discouraged. Your future seems bleak. This morning, you can walk out of all of that into light and secure your glorious future. You know the things you have been struggling with. You want to be free from it. I want to pray with you. This is that opportunity and that platform for you to be free. No one can be free except Jesus makes him free. And so while the choir is doing that song, everyone that wants to say, Jesus, save me. Jesus, deliver me. Wherever you are, just make your way to the altar and I'm going to pray for you before we partake of the Lord's table. You want to be free from the power of sin, from everything that defies, everything that corrupts, everything that has been tormenting you. While the word was going on, the Holy Ghost has been ministering to your heart, has been speaking to you. There is nothing to be ashamed of. This is your life. Life is an individual race and everybody is running their own race. And so while the choir is doing that song the next two minutes, you want to walk out of darkness into light. You want to walk out of captivity, out of horror into freedom and liberty. I want you to make your way to the altar right now. The choir will sing that song. Just make your way to the altar. I'll pray for you right now. And then we partake of the Lord's table as we get set to close in the service. There is power, wonder-working power. Everyone who is coming, come very quickly, come very quickly. Jesus is setting men and women free this morning. Jesus is setting men and women free. Don't stand in the congregation. You know the struggles. But this morning you want to be free. Just make your way to the altar. Make your way to the altar right now. You can walk out of that torment of the devil. Jesus wants you free. 
You don't have to continue in that struggle. No. You don't have to continue in that struggle. You can be free. You can be free. You can be free. Everyone standing in front, please put your right hand on your chest. Repeat this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I come to you today. Forgive me all my sins. Wash me in your blood. Deliver me by your blood from the power of sin and of death from today. Take over my life. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Now keep your hands on your chest as I pray for you. Our Father, your saving grace has visited your sons and daughters. Therefore, in the name of Jesus, everything that represents a stronghold of the wicked in your life, that stronghold be broken now in the name of Jesus. Whatever you desire to be free from, by the blood of Jesus and the authority in the name of Jesus, your liberty be established in the name of Jesus. Right now, I decree your liberty from every siege of the wicked over your destiny. You will not fail. You will not fall. Whatever tree may be in your life that has not been planted by God, that tree withers from the roots. And the fruits thereof you will see no more. Every appetite and craving that is not of God is destroyed. In the name of Jesus Christ. Be blessed. Be blessed. And be blessed. In the name of Jesus. Listen. There is no condemnation to them that are in Christ. Who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Now you are born again. Now you are a child of God. Now you have handed over your life to God. Now you have expressed your desire to be free. Don't go back to the things that used to entice you. And as the Lord lives, whatever you desire to be free from, you are free from it. In the name of Jesus. Congratulations. We'll continue to pray for you and Christ shall be formed in you. In the name of Jesus. Please, just go with our kingdom friends. They'll pass some information across to you. God bless you. Congratulations. God bless you. Shall we put our hands together for Jesus? The communion officials, please approach the table. Approach the table. The choir will continue doing that song as we partake of the communion table. I want to encourage every one of us, as you partake of this table, do it with faith, do it with expectations, and in the name of Jesus, your expectations shall not be cut off. Our Father, we thank you. We declare the table blessed and sanctified as the flesh and the blood of Jesus. And let everyone's desire be established this morning. We declare that this table shall be a table of liberty. Every ungodly appetite is destroyed. Everyone that came in here sick or oppressed of the devil, your liberty is established. In the name of Jesus Christ. So shall it be. In Jesus' precious name. The table is blessed. In the name of Jesus Christ. Power in the blood of Jesus.